So if I have a financial advisory business and I want a consistent flow of inquiries to be able to grow my revenue potential and maybe even looking to sell it in a couple of years' time, what would you advise? How would you say I get an influx of inquiries? So first and foremost, if you're looking to grow a financial advice or you're a finance advisor and you're looking to grow more leads and obviously try to make more profit, financial advice is a very broad kind of topic to talk about. So is it debt? Is it pensions? Is it mortgages? There's lots of different types of financial advice. So what I'd want to try to do is try to understand, let's say it was debt, right? That even just within debt, you've got business debt and corporate debt and you've got personal debt. I think you need to start understanding even within those, you've got CVLs and CVA. You've got liquidation, you've got administration. In personal debt, you've got insolvency um, IVAs. You've got debt management plans. You've got bankruptcy. You've got trust deeds. So these financial advisors need to understand, okay, where is it that we make our money and what do we convert the best? Mm -hmm. And once they understand that, that's when then they can start looking to do potentially do PPC. Yeah. Um, because they know exactly what keywords that they want to do. My only issue with PPC is click fraud. Mm -hmm. I know you're not the biggest advocate of saying that pay-per-click is the best form of marketing. Yeah. But it but another part is with regards to SEO, you can do a broad spectrum of going after all financial advice. And then you can then start knuckling down into certain areas where you might make more profit and build more backlinks to there. Mm -hmm. So if you want to expand a little bit on, let's say, SEO for financial advisors as a way to grow their business. Yeah. So one one thing to add to what you've just said about the PPC stuff, um, if you are going to go down the route, just know that you're going to want to hire somebody that's an expert. Like the the last thing you want to be doing is is actually ringing the leads yourself and also generating the leads and also looking at the ad campaign. It's, there's just not enough time in, in, the, in the actual day to do it. Um, that being said, again, I'm not a big massive fan of PPC because again, in the finance industry, there's a lot of click fraud. Your competitors are clicking on your ads. Um, you just have a lot of issues. Um, so unless you've got like a really good negative keyword list or you've even got somebody in house, I would probably stay away from it unless, I mean, some people probably would want leads today. Yeah. Um, and if, if you want leads today, right now, in the next six, seven days, then go down that route. But going back to what you said before, SEO, um, SEO is obviously a little bit of a slower win. Um, it's probably more of an investment for the next six or six to 12 months, really, even, even in some cases, depending on if, if, say, you might be a wealth management company in New York, that's going to be pretty difficult to rank. So that might be like a two year investment. Um, but that being said, it, you are building out an asset. You like your website is actually generating you the inquiries. So on that front, it's definitely well worth doing. You don't want to be relying on like a lead generation company or potentially a, if a, just a third party. Um, so don't have all your ed eggs in one basket, but once you've got your SEO set up, I think the next step would probably be lead generation. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for anyone who's watching this, if you're a financial advisor, then SEO is great with regards to getting the organic rankings and getting the clicks and stuff like that. So it is a long-term investment, like what Kazri said. But also, as part of SEO, in my opinion, forms branding and reputation management. You want to be making certain that you've got these testimonials and case studies there could be videos, there could be images of a specific kind of client that you've had that's left you a really nice quote and a review. They need to be shared everywhere and need to be made certain the part of your case studies and your branding online. And once you've got that branding set up properly, that's when then you can start looking to potentially go and buy leads from a lead generation company. Now, over at fatrank.com, they do a lot of no no win, no fee lead generation. You do need to qualify, and it's a very, very strict, stringent onboarding process where they, they are checking your testimonials online. They're checking your case studies. They're checking that your branding looks good so that you can convert the leads because if the branding's not good and they're generating your leads and you're not converting them, then obviously over at FatRank, they don't get paid. There is other places where maybe like Bark and a few other places that sell financial advice leads. 
I'd be very careful with certain lead generation companies, mainly because they don't do exclusive leads. So they might be selling that same lead to four or five, even six different companies. Um, so yeah, you need to be making certain you're checking the return on investment with any sort of lead generation companies that you might be using. Mm -hmm. But away from potentially using, let's say, fatrank.com for lead generation, which guarantees a return on investment, that's obviously that's one step that I would definitely be doing. But you said don't throw all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. So what about social media? Like, in your opinion, do you have any preference with regards to, let's say, Facebook ads or organic Facebook? Like, what's the difference for you? Would you want them to do organic social media as well as paid social media? I think with um, with financial advisory or or anything in that realm i think if you are do have a, a social presence um on organic facebook or maybe even organic twitter and stuff that can definitely help and i wouldn't necessarily be salesy it, it would be very much a video like this um explaining protection planning or um mortgage planning or what whatever the type of planning you're doing it might be even retirement um advice and stuff like that so if you can do videos like this on organic so it could be youtube it could be facebook it could be twitter and um, that can definitely go a long way um and then off the back of that i would also be running some form of facebook advertising whether it's retargeting so for example if not everybody that visits your website um, ends up turning into a customer so the next time they load up Facebook they could be displayed with a retargeting ad um, some of you guys might have seen it when whenever you go on like ASOS and stuff and then next time you load up Facebook you say oh those are the shoes that I was just looking at but I've not actually ended up buying them so that, that's basically what a retargeting ad is um, and then you can also do potentially um, some cold ads on Facebook where you're targeting people that are maybe getting into the, like the retirement age. You might say, right, anybody that's plus 60, I want them to see this ad. So you've got a variety of different strategies there. Um, but is there anything else that you re would recommend? Is there any traditional marketing? Let's say? Yeah, so like with traditional marketing, there's quite a few people now that have started going, let's say, equity release or um, retirement mortgages. So there's a lot of TV ads out there for it now, and they've been running it for many years. So you would say that they're getting some sort of return on investment on it to keep running it for so many years. You've got radio ads, you've got billboard ads. You've got to remember this industry is absolutely huge. So potentially, if the money's there, traditional marketing could work well. Yeah. For me, if I'm being honest with you, I, if it was my business and I was setting up, and even if I had 50 financial advisors, I'd go down the route of starting off making certain with regards to SEO, I've got my branding perfect online. I'd go down the route of lead generation. I might even try two or three different lead generation companies and then being omnipresent with regards to social media. I wouldn't personally do PPC because of the click fraud. And I wouldn't personally do traditional marketing. That is definitely not to say that those platforms don't work. I just don't see the ROI on that in comparison to others. These other things like networking events, potentially, that people could be going to, um, trying to befriend um, accountancy practices, yep. trying to befriend other like neighbouring or shouldering niches that might be able to refer them in for financial and wealth care kind of services. So you've got to remember that there is so many different sub-niches within finance that they need to dig down and become an expert in something. There's no point being a jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. Be an expert in something and go down into that. Get your lead generation for it, specifically for them leads. Get the SEO set up for it. Good quality backlinks to power up the website and get that omnipresent set up for social media. I think one one thing that's pretty important that you've just mentioned is, is networking. Um, and there's a lot of accountants that actually help their client base sell their businesses and typically speaking after somebody sold their business for two three four million the next thing that they'd want is to secure some of that money in like a financial plan yeah. so they don't just lose it all so that could be another route that you could definitely go down as well is there anything else that you that's really it i mean like you said on the networking side of things like accountants are probably the biggest lead generation company for anyone that's in corporate finance corporate debt mm -hmm. because if someone needs a bridging loan yeah. for example, or someone needs um, liquidation because a company's gone bust on them and they're having to fold their company, 
the the accountants normally know first, and they normally pass you on to someone with regards to like an insolvency practitioner. Mm -hmm. That then the normal referral comes from there. So the networking part of that, if you are in insolvency or in business loans, getting in with as many different accountants as you can is good practice. And that's what a lot of good lead generation companies do as well. They understand this, and they understand that the gold mine of what an accountancy firm is sat on. Mm -hmm. And they will start not only looking to rank specifically for keywords like CVLs or any st stuff like that. They, they're trying to think outside the box to try and make certain they're getting a consistent flow of inquiries for financial advisors. Yeah, definitely. If you guys do have a financial advisory business and you want more leads, a consistent flow of inquiries, check out the link down below or head over to fatrank.com.